The Centaur by Mary Swenson The summer that I was ten. Can it be there was only one summer that I was ten? It must have been a long one then. Each day I'd go out to choose a fresh horse from my stable, which was a willow grove down by the old canal. I'd go on my two bare feet, but when, with my brother's jackknife, I'd cut me a long limber horse with a good thick knob for a head and peeled him slick and clean, except for a few leaves for the tail, and kinched my brother's belt around his head for a rein, I'd straddle and catch him fast up the grass bank to the path, trot along in the lovely dust that talcumed over his hooves, hiding my toes and turning his feet to swift half-moons. The willow knob with the strap jouncing between my thighs was the pommel and yet the pole of my nickering pony's head. My head and my neck were mine, yet they were shaped like a horse. My hair flopped to the side like the mane of a horse in the wind. My forelock swung in my eyes, my neck arched and I snorted. I shied and skittered and reared, stopped and raised my knees, pawed at the ground and quivered, my teeth bared as we wheeled, and swished through the dust again. I was the horse and the rider, and the leather I snapped to his rump, spanked my own behind, doubled my two hooves beat, a gallop along the bank. The wind twanged in my mane, my mouth squared to the bit, and yet I sat on my steed, quiet, negligent riding, my toes standing in the stirrups, my thighs hugging his ribs. At a walk we drew up to the porch, I tethered him to a powling. Dismounting, I smoothed my skirt, and entered the dusky hall. My feet on the clean linoleum left ghostly toes in the hall. Where have you been? said my mother. Been riding, I said from the sink, and filled me a glass of water. What's that in your pocket? she said. Just my knife. It weighed my pocket and stretched my dress awry. Go back, tie your hair, said my mother, and why is your mouth all green? Rob Roy, he pulled some clover as we crossed the field, I told her. The title of this poem, The Centaur, is a mythological creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. May Swenson lived from 1919 to 1989. Thus, we will read a modern poem during the time of the women's rights movement and just after the 19th Amendment was ratified. Summer is a time of lightheartedness, joviality, and vitality. The speaker is a ten-year-old girl. Her rhetorical question creates a reminiscent tone. Horses symbolize unbridled freedom. Going out to choose a fresh horse from the stable each day either alludes to the wealthiness of this girl or the scene is imaginary. Here we find out that it is indeed a pretend game. The girl's bare feet suggests she is either poor or a tomboy. The girl wields her brother's knife, suggesting she is not conforming with society's expectations for her. There is visual imagery that depicts the girl making her pretend horse. The girl is very resourceful with everyday items like the leaves and belt. She does not seem to be wealthy. This passage has a whimsical and playful tone. This seems to be a fondful memory of playing make-believe. The poem keeps shifting from fantasy to reality imagery. The pommel is the front of the saddle and the pole is the top of the horse's head. The girl is morphing into both horse and rider, alluding to the mythical centaur. The forelock is the hair in between the horse's ears. Horsey, playful diction is used along with auditory imagery of snorted and the visual the visual imagery of shield, skirted, and reared. We have more horsey, playful diction that consists of pawed, quivered, and bared. The speaker explicitly says she is the horse and rider as an allusion to the centaur. This poem has a lot of descriptive playfulness. The bit represents restricted freedom. The idea of the speaker being both horse and rider is a paradox. Quiet, negligent riding seems to be two contrasting ideas. We also see more riding imagery. Here we have a full shift back to reality. The girl's dress suggests she's being groomed to be a proper young woman. The girl's toes are compared to ghosts and a metaphor as she leaves behind her playful nature and enters her home. The girl responds to her mother with a nonchalant, colloquial tone. The girl is dressed as a proper woman. She seems to be rebelling and destroying her genteel appearance. The speaker's mother has an imploring tone because she wants her daughter to conform to society's expectations of girls. The girl answers her mother with wry humor as she blames her appearance on presumably her fantasized horse. Throughout the poem, there is a rhythmic cadence that resembles the sound of a horse's hooves pounding. Action verbs like jouncing, nickering, skittered, and reared creates a whimsical, playful tone. Soapstone time. 
The subject is a girl who does not conform to her mother's wishes of being a proper young woman, and instead, instead plays horse and rider outside. This poem takes place in the late 1920s, during the women's rights movement in the summer. Those interested in childhood experiences or women's rights should read this poem. Swenson wrote this poem to show the importance of imagination in childhood and to encourage others to not just merely conform to society's expectations. The speaker is a 10-year-old girl who is a tomboy and likes to play outside. The tone is whimsical, playful, and reminiscent. 